So our reading today is about Paul, who writes to the church in Thessalonica, and he's talking about how to, how to love people. And the verses that we're going to look at in particular are the ones that say, just as a nursing mum cares for her children, so we cared for you. Because we loved you so much, we were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well. And so that's Paul. Paul describes himself as being like a mum who looks after their children. And as we were talking about mums, all of us will know mums give up their lives for their children. They know when all of their children are going to come home. They stay up late at night until they walk in. My mum still does that. I'm 25. I don't even live in her house. But she likes to know when I'm home and safe. They give up their lives to look after their children. And that kind of love is sacrificial love. And that's what Paul is talking about um, in 1 Thessalonians. Paul says that he was like a mother to them, that him, a man, has those, has those attributes of a mother, that he loves them and cares for them. And those ultimately are the characteristics of God. It says in Isaiah, um, sorry, just lost my line. It says in Isaiah that God protects those he loves. That's a mother. If you've ever seen any sort of animal program where there's a mum and there's cubs and someone tries to get the cubs, the mum is protective, very protective. And that's what God is like. But the important thing to note is what, why he cared for them. It says that he didn't care for them because he had to or he felt obligated to, but he did it out of love. And I think that's the difference. That's the thing that um, I struggle with is the thing that I have to be nice to people because God says be nice to people. But that's not what Paul says. He says because he loves them, because of the love of God, he could care for them. I'm going to get this name wrong, but Dietrich Benhoffer is a spiritual writer and he explains it like this. The person who loves their dream of community will destroy it, but the person who loves those around them will create community. So the motive always is love. Love anything. Love that comes from God to share for those around us. And out of this care, Paul states that it's not just about telling people about Jesus. It's not about passing on the message. But he goes a step further and he says, it's about sharing your lives with people. Now, I don't know about you, but my natural reaction, but, um, when people say share your lives, I'm like, great, yeah, I'll invite them to dinner. We'll have dinner and I'll go home. That's it. We tend to put a barrier around it. So we'll say, you can come this far into my life, but that's enough because any closer and that would be really awkward. Or when life is clean and neat, they can come and share my life. But when it's messy and it's awkward, then, then that's not allowed. There is always that natural pull um, to push people away. And Shane Claiborne, or Claiborne wrote this book called The Irresistible Revolution. I don't know if you've read it. It's a good book. But he says, For everything in this world tries to pull us away from community, pushes us to choose ourselves over others, to choose independence over interdependence, to choose great things over small things, and to choose going fast alone over going far together. And so that's it. It's countercultural to share your lives with other people, especially in London. <laughs> it's very easy to do that. But Jesus, but that's what the kingdom looks like. That's what Jesus came, he said, to be sacrificial. He shared his life with his friends. He laid down his life for enemies, but he shared his life with us and with other people. Also in um, The Irresistible Revolution, um, Shane quotes a lady called Mama T, who isn't Mother Teresa, by the way. <laughs> um, he, he used to say this, love until it hurts and then love some more. I'll say that again. Love until it hurts and then love some more. It's going to hurt to love people and it's going to hurt to let people join in our lives. But that's what Jesus says. That's what Jesus shows us is the best way to live. Being able to allow people into our lives gives people an honor. And it's a joy for them to be a part of, their li be a part of your lives. And that's, that's discipleship. That's what we're going through at St. Paul's, learning about discipleship and making disciple makers. It's messy, but it's all out of love. You can teach your children how to deal with grief and how to deal with hurt by allowing them to see your life. 
Don't push them away. Don't send them in the other room. Talk to them about how you feel. Share your life with them. You can show your friends at work what a loving, faithful marriage is like by bringing them into your home, by sharing your lives with them. You can be the example. And you can show sacrificial love to your friend so that they can have hope. It sounds easy, but it does take a lot from our side. But it brings so much joy, and that's what Paul's talking about. Out of the love that he has for them, he can share his life with them. I'm just going to quote that phrase again where it says, Love until it hurts, and then love some more. Love until it hurts, and then love some more. And that's what Paul's letter brings us. It's a challenge. It's not comfortable. It's awkward. But that's what brings the most joy. I've, I've had the pleasure of being part of lots of people's lives. I'm a vicar's daughter. And so we always had lots of people come in our house. And we had to share our lives with them. We didn't have any choice. But I learned what it looks like to be in a family. I learned what it looks like when people are grieving and they come and they share their grief. I've shared houses with couples and families and I've learned how they have dealt with things and I've learned how they deal with life and how they love when it's really hard to love or when things are messy. And that has given me so much. It's invaluable. It's just so valuable to me to have that experience. But the great thing is that God loves and God is love. And when we ask him to fill us with his love, This is easier because it's not out of a motivation of wanting to tick the box or just do what somebody says at church. When we feel God's love for other people, we'll want them to come in our lives. We'll want them to come and share our lives with us. And so that's the challenge this morning. The nature of God is that of caring, loving, protecting, and all sacrificial. And we are his children. And so we should do what he does and we should be like he is. And it's our responsibility to show those around us what love is. And not to shut ourselves off, but to show them how great God's love is. So it's quite a challenge this morning. (laughs) But it's a good one, and it's exciting, and and it's out of a place of love. Because God loves us. I was just wondering if you could all just close your eyes, because it's... Ignore the noise, if you can. But I really feel like God wants to give us specific people that can share our lives with him this morning. It might be just one person. It could be a family of people. But as I was talking, it could have brought up feelings of being fearful, of it being a scary thing. And your immediate reaction may have been, uh, no, thank you. <laughs> I'm okay. But we're children of God. And we need to be like him. So if you could um, think of a person or a family who you really want to bless and who you really want to love and care for. And I'm just going to pray for us. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you love us. That you know the best way for us to live. Jesus, I thank you that you were sacrificial, that you shared your life. And I pray that you would take away any fear that we might have of sharing our lives with other people. I pray that you would give us boldness to invite people into the parts of our lives that we'd rather not. I pray that you would give us a heart, a heart for the people that you love. Fill us with your spirit, God. And let us love others as you have loved us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Brilliant. I'm going to ask Rick to come out now. <laughs>